Hey, Jeremy Lund here with Kiteboard Coach. In this video, we're going to be discussing what's known as the Beaufort Scale, and this is a way of measuring the wind by using your surroundings. For example, looking at the way the trees are reacting, the way the water's reacting to the wind, etc. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at what one Beaufort looks like. It has a wind speed of 1 to 3 knots, and again, it's 1.2 miles per hour per knot, and has a WMO classification of light air. Now, the WMO classification is the World Meteorological Organization. So when you look at the forecast in the morning and you might not see the actual wind speed, but they classify the day as having light air, they're referring to one Beaufort. Now once you get on scene and you're trying to decide what size kite to put up, you can look at your surroundings. The water will have scaly ripples and no foam crests. So what this means is that you're just seeing some light rippling on the water. There's actually no white caps being formed. On, la on land, you'll see still wind vanes. So if you look up and you don't see the anemometer spinning, you know that you're probably in one to three knots or less. All right, so let's go ahead and see what two Beauforts looks like. So two Beauforts is gonna be a wind speed of four to six knots. It has a WMO classification of light breeze. And the water is gonna have small wavelets and it's gonna be have some crests on it that are glassy and they're not breaking. So basically just a little bit bigger ripples than you're gonna see in one Beaufort. And this is when you start to feel a little bit of wind on your face. You start hearing a little bit of wind in the trees. But again, still probably not enough to go kiting. Uh, if you're really, really good on your foil, you might be able to get out there. But uh, it's not going to be a very good day, most likely, unless it picks up. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at three Beauforts. It has a wind speed of 7 to 10 knots, a WMO classification gentle breeze, and the water starts to have larger wavelets and the crests begin to break with scattered white caps. So basically you're seeing some crests that are just starting to fold over and then uh, you know every 10, 20 feet or so you're gonna see different white caps that are starting to break. On land, the leaves and small twigs are gonna start moving and the flag actually starts to become a little bit more lively. So now you have a little bit more wind, at least enough to fly your kite on the beach and get out there on a foil. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at four Beauforts now. Wind speed of 11 to 16 knots. WMO classification, moderate breeze. The water has small waves, one to four feet, becoming larger and numerous white caps. So this is really when you start to get into your good wind range. On land, you're gonna notice that the dust, the leaves, and uh, loose paper can be lifted, and small tree branches start to move around a little bit. Uh, so, you know, definitely starting to get into our lower wind range here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at five Beauforts now. 17 to 21 knots, the WMO classification is fresh breeze. The water has moderate waves of four to eight feet and they take longer to form. And there's many white caps and the ocean actually starts to have some spray on it. So basically when you look out in the water, you may not see four to eight foot waves. It really depends on the wind direction. Uh, side shore conditions, depending on where you're at, you may still have only one to two foot waves, um, but this is the actual Beaufort classification. On land, you're gonna to start to see trees that have leaves on them starting to sway pretty good at this point. Now, this is gonna be our medium wind range. Uh, this is a really, really good wind range to get out there and go kiting. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what six Beauforts looks like. 22 to 27 knots, a WMO classification of strong breeze. Large waves, eight to 13 feet. White caps are all over the place and you're gonna to start to see quite a bit of spray coming off the waves. On land, you're gonna see larger tree branches starting to move and you're gonna hear whistling wires. So your telephone wires, your electrical wires that are elevated, you're gonna hear some whistling coming off those. And I found this to be very, very true. Now, as far as the wave size, depending on where you're at and the wind direction, you may not actually have eight to 13 foot waves. But again, this is just the actual classification of the Beaufort scale. Now in this wind, we're in our high wind range, so this is when you start need to be uh, extra careful because there's a lot of power out there. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at seven Beauforts. Wind speed of 28 to 33 knots, WMO classification near gale. The water, uh, basically you're gonna see, the sea is really becoming alive at this point. Waves are 13 to 19 feet and foam streaks off the breakers. So what that means, if you look out, and where the white caps are forming behind them, you're gonna see a lot of streaks of white foam starting to form. Not full-fledged foam, but it's just nice white streaks. And on land, whole trees are really starting to move and you can feel the resistance when you're walking against the wind. This type of wind speed should be left for expert kiters only. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at eight Beauforts, which is 34 to 40 knots, WMO classification of gale. So when you see that gale warning, you know that you could be experiencing 34 to 40 knots, quite a bit of wind. Moderately high, 18 to 25 foot waves. 
and the foam really starts to streak and blow down the water. So not just seeing the foam lines in the water, but you actually see foam that's tumbling down the sea. And uh, you'll know what that looks like when you see it. It's gonna look pretty intense out there. On land, you're gonna see twigs breaking off trees and uh, it impedes progress. And what that means is that if you were walking into the wind, it actually becomes very, very difficult at this point. Now, the Bullfort scale does go all the way up to a 12 and that's actually hurricane force. We're only gonna cover up to eight today because there's not too many people who should even be kiting in eight Beauforts. It is possible, uh, but I don't recommend it. All right, so that's it for the Beaufort scale. I still do recommend using a portable anemometer, which is just a handheld wind measuring device, uh, but it's good to know how this works as well because the anemometers may not always be accurate, and also where you're standing, the wind could be blocked. If you look around you, you're getting to see the big picture of how strong the actual wind is. Uh, for example, if you're out in cold water or cold wind or something, the wind is going to be more powerful than it is in a warmer place. And that's going to make the whole landscape react differently. So you can really get a better judgment of how strong the wind is by using the Beaufort scale.